good morning.
Good morning. Welcome to Christ Episcopal Church on this beautiful fall day when we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis. If you are looking for a calm, meditative, and introspective experience, you should come back next week. Uh, today we have many of our four-legged friends, some of our no-legged friends, and, uh, and creatures of all kinds with us in church. Uh, so the Holy Spirit is in charge, and uh, chaos will ensue, and together we will all learn about the uh, expansiveness of creation as we know it in all kinds of forms. As we celebrate uh, God's Spirit in our midst today, uh, we are also mindful that we passed a grim milestone this week, 700,000 dead in this country from COVID-19. So today in church, we carry joy and grief in our hearts, following in the way of St. Francis. Our service continues on page four. Blessed be the one holy and living God. We say together, Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our God, amen. May God be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, help us to see that so much of this world is vanity and distracts us from finding you in each other and in ourselves. Help us to follow the way of St. Francis of Assisi. May we delight in your whole creation, the earth and sky and sea, sun and moon and stars, animals wild and tame, our neighbors and our enemies. We ask this through Jesus Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in everything, forever and ever. We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do as members of Christ's body. In God, there is forgiveness. Loving God, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to yours. God forgives us. Be at peace. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Can you number the months that they fulfill? And do you know the time when they give birth, when they crouch to give birth to their offspring and are delivered of their young? Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open. They go forth and do not return to them. Who has let the wild ass go free? Who has loosed the bonds of the swift ass to which I have given the step for its home, the salt land for its dwelling place? It scorns the tumult of the city. It does not hear the shouts of the driver. It ranges the mountains as its pasture and it searches after every green thing. Is the wild ox willing to serve you? Will it spend the night at your crib? Can you tie it in the furrow with ropes? Or will it harrow the valleys after you? Will you depend on it because of its, its strength is great? And will you hand over your labor to it? 
Do you have faith in that it will return and bring your grain to your threshing floor? The ostrich's wings flap wildly, though its pinions lack plumage, for it leaves its eggs to the earth and lets them be warmed on the ground, forgetting that a foot may crush them and that a wild animal may trample them. It deals cruelly with its young, as if they were not its own. Though its labor should be in vain, yet it has no fear, because God has made it forget wisdom and given it no share in understanding. When it spreads its plumes aloft, it laughs at the horse and its rider. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in reciting Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, it is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of Jesus Christ.
No? Now? Okay. Well, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Well, welcome to St. Francis Day at Christ Church. It's the day that Episcopalians torture their pets. <laughs> Hopefully not. I think Raven is really having the time of her life. It's the most excitement she's had. This is Raven, and today's sermon is somewhat of a meditation on Raven and St. Francis of Assisi using a, an acrostic poem. Does anyone know what that is? Any of the kids in here know what an acrostic poem is? Anybody? It's like when you write a word and you have a letter from each of the words, each of the, each of the letters of the word have another, another, letter, another word that goes with it. So the name that. Raven, I'm going to play with and talk about Raven and talk about St. Francis of Assisi. So the first word is relationship. So the relationship with Raven, Matt, I, Matt and me and Raven, began on Inauguration Day in January. This beautiful little cat, who was probably five months old, arrived in our front garden. And at first we thought, well, we'll just give it a little milk and maybe we'll put out an email to the neighborhood and see, see whose cat it is. And no one responded. And in the middle of the night, Raven figured out where we were in the house and came and cried for our attention. And so we started to think maybe we should bring her in. So we had a relationship. She wanted a relationship. And uh, Matt always wanted a cat. I wanted a dog. And we hadn't had a pet in all of our many years of marriage. Um, I think 13 years this month. So Raven came into our life and uh, reminded us about an aspect of St. Francis, relationship. St. Francis had a relationship with God, but it started out, um, he started out, St. Francis, as, as a child of a merchant and was very privileged and very playful, but something happened to him after experiencing some suffering and seeing poverty in the world. He realized that God was calling him and he felt a voice calling him when he was in a church, the chapel of San Damiano and heard the voice say, rebuild my church. So the next word, A, is action. And uh, with, with uh, Raven, Matt and I pretty much had to jump into action when we realized we were going to be taking this little cat inside. Because we have coyotes and we have birds of prey all around our, our house in El Cerrito. So we brought her in, and well, first of all, we took her to the vet and got her checked out and got her, what did we do? We got you fixed and everything, right? Anyway, then Raven started to, Raven so we took some action. But you know what, St. Francis took house. action, and he actually rebuilt this church. Listen. He didn't quite get, maybe, maybe he did get it. He was like, I got to take some action. But the action that he took actually went much further than that. And his call to rebuild the church took on the shape of creating a community that embraced poverty and embraced service to the poor. And this was in the Middle Ages. This would have been in the 11. 11 to 1200s, early 1200s. And so Francis took a lot of actions in his life that transformed the church. And the next word is V, vulnerability. Um, and Francis was one who, embracing poverty, embracing lepers, embracing the way of the cross of Jesus, was about being vulnerable, taking risks. He gave up his whole life, his life of privilege and, and position in, in, in his uh, middle ages life and, uh, and took on something different. And he got in some trouble. His parents weren't very happy about it, his dad especially. And his, he ended up having to go before the bishop, which was like a pretty much a political as well as religious situation. And he was completely vulnerable. And actually, the, in one of the movies at least, he strips down in the middle of the square completely naked as a, as a representation of his yes. renunciation of, of the worldly life and embrace of a different one. So we had relationship, and we had action, and we had vulnerability. And the next one is energy. Um, and I could have gone with ecology or environment, because of course uh, Francis was way into that as well, and well known for that. In fact, uh, Pope Francis wrote a whole encyclical about climate change uh, with the name Laudato Si, which comes from Francis's Canticle of the Sun, 
Anyway, I could go on a bit about that. But the whole idea of energy is when Raven came into our life, our whole energy in our house changed. I mean, we had to deal with an animal that woke up before we did, and that energy, you know, is a good one, actually. <laughs> Especially during the pandemic, when all we wanted to do was stay in bed. You did really well with that, sweetheart. And energy, energy is more than just, you know, how you power your house or how you feel the resolve to get up every day. It, it, it can change, but every single day, Raven's energy opens us up to the world around us. And she notices things out the window that we wouldn't notice. And so with energy, same with Francis. I mean, Francis's call, it didn't just affect him, it affected, it affected his entire community, and ultimately in his lifetime, the whole known world, there were people who said, we're going to do this Francis thing. And he had to go before the Pope and get permission to embrace this order. He got a special blessing to do that. And that energy affected the whole of the Vatican. In fact, the Pope at the time had a vision, a dream, that Francis was actually holding up the Vatican. Can you imagine that? This little poor man of Assisi was holding up and proving that the church had to change. And another way that... that um, <laughs> Francis changed the world was during the Crusades, the, the, in the Fifth Crusade, he actually went and spoke to the enemy of his people, the Sultan, sat down with him. And the Sultan thought, huh, you're a pretty cool guy. If all Christians were like you, I might actually become one. So the energy of Francis was contagious. And there's a saying that he said, if you preach the gospel at all times, if you have to use words, people aren't sure if he actually used that phrase per se, but he was all about living this way in the way of Jesus that was attractive and that drew people to it. And one of the things he did, what he, he started the first nativity. Do you know what a nativity pageant is, Ginger? You've been in one many times. What's a nativity pageant? Uh huh. Right, but but what is the usual every year we do a pageant? What's it about? Does anyone remember what we do every year at Christmas? Eleanor tells the story, but which part of this story of Jesus? The birth of Jesus. So you know, Francis, Saint Francis of Assisi, was the first person in the known world to create a nativity, a living nativity. Because he believed it was so important for people to understand that God had become flesh and lived among humans and to convey that idea to people who largely didn't even know how to read the Bible was really important and so the nativity became an essential part of what Francis was about so that energy think about it every time we have a pageant we're remembering in a certain kind of way the energy of Francis and last but not least and Raven is very eager to go hang out with Matt and you will in just a second, I promise. The last word, what's the last word? Oh, newness. The newness. Now, we could, there would be lots of words we could go with, like network or neighborhood. But I went with newness because Francis was a kind of an iconoclast. He did some things in his life that were out there and embraced people he probably shouldn't have. And that was seen as really out there, radical, bad stuff. But he took a risk. He did some new things and inspired the church to do some new things. And that newness is something we can experience when we touch on the life of Francis. We start to think, you know what? Maybe my faith isn't so much about the past and doing things the old way. Maybe it's about something about the spirit now in my life. And maybe I have something to say to the church. Or maybe I have a way to live that's special. Well, with Raven and newness, um, she's, this is her first St. Francis. She's not Francis Day. She's actually never been to church before. She's really never been anywhere but the vet. So this is new for her, and this is new for us. But every single day she wakes us up in a slightly different way. She takes a new tack at banging into our door and knocking our door down. Or she, she, she's always bouncing around or clawing on something new, and she reminds us that newness is of God and that we should embrace it. So, can anyone help me remember all the different words that come from Raven? So what was the first word? R? Relationship, okay. And then A? Action. And what was, and then V? 
vulnerability, and E, energy, and the last one, newness. Amen. Jackson, you get a hold of On every feast of St. Francis, we bless the animals and bless some of the people, too, in the process. And uh, someone at the 8 o'clock said this is a little passive-aggressive for the clergy to fling things at people, but that's St. Francis turned things upside down, so that's how this works. Please join me on page eight as together we profess our faith in the tradition of the Nicene Creed with a number of typos in it, which may be heresy, but we'll, we'll make our way. We believe in one God, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from God and Jesus. With them, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. God of hope, help us who struggle in our daily lives. When we lose our purpose, When we bow to hatred, you our trust in you. When, we sur when we surrender to despair, 
when we take offense at others, when we compromise our values, when we are sick, when we die. Hold us and all people in your loving care. And may the spirit of St. Francis and the peace of God always be with you. And also with you. Thank you. We have a number of announcements at the back of the bulletin. Uh, the first is that uh, my daughter Priscilla would like to introduce her snake, Rosie. Rosie is a corn snake, and she's very easygoing. And that's it, really, isn't it? Okay. Uh, let's see. In other news, uh, there are a lot of announcements, and they start somewhere in here on page uh, 16. Uh, tomorrow is our marvelous monthly Monday ministry meeting. We were going to have it in person, but I'm going to be out of town and our senior warden is going to be out of town, so we're going to do it on Zoom. At 4 p.m. tomorrow, you will receive an email with the proper link for that Zoom. Ironically, a year and a half ago, we thought it was a huge hassle to have meetings online, and now it's a big hassle to have meetings together, so you can't win. Uh, as you all know, St. Francis was especially fond of animals and seeing God in them, and he had a special fondness for birds. So I want to take a moment to let you all know that the Seattle Seahawks uh, play in that spirit, and today at 1 p.m., God will be on their side as they take on the San Francisco gold diggers. Uh, this month of October, um, it is um, our faithful giving uh, celebration. We are uh, looking at different ways in which we come together to share our resources with this community, and so this community can expand them out into the world. We'll hear speakers every Sunday, and on the 24th, we have a guest preacher, uh, and we're going to have a big party over in the parish hall. Uh, there's a class coming up called Epis it's the Episcopal Discovery Class. This is where you can learn everything you've ever wanted to know about the Episcopal Church. Now, if you are, say, preparing to go on a date with someone and you want to really impress them with your knowledge of uh, Episcopal arcana, this is your chance to learn what all, all the secret stuff we do around here. Uh, our Thanksgiving dinner is, is starting to crank up. Next month, we're going to feed hundreds of people on Thanksgiving Day. We need a lot of help and volunteers to pull that off. You can find more information in the bulletin about that. Um, finally, for my part, uh, at 2.30 today, I'm flying to Las Vegas with 10 priests. Uh, we're spending the night there, and then we're going to spend five days backpacking through a remote part of the Grand Canyon. So I'll be gone this week, but I'll be back uh, next Sunday. Will Scott, what do we have uh, for you and Raven? <laughs> I gave Raven... Oh, dear. You all right over there, Jackson? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to give a big thank you to the Center Court folks. If you were at Center Court yesterday um, and were part of uh, hosting a, a new member reception, uh, can we give you a round of applause? Great job. Um, special thanks to Hannah, uh, chair of our welcoming ministry um, it was really beautiful. It was hot, but it was lovely. And uh, Maggie Pico did an amazing job with food. Thank you, Maggie. Um, and lots of other people helped out. It was a really great occasion. Um, and that reminds me, if you're new, if this is your first time here today, and you want to be invited to things and included in stuff, please fill out our digital or our real guest book. And you can, there's a QR code in your pew. Next uh, <laughs> announcement is for all youth middle and high school. There'll be a gathering at uh, St. Dorothy's Rest, the 15th through the 17th. We're going to do work on some uh, of their buildings and, and some other activities. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so if you plan to come to that, please let me know. I'll be reaching out to you as well. Um, but it should be an amazing, beautiful time of year to be out in the Redwoods. Uh, that's out near Occidental. That's it. Thank you, Will. 
I'd like to invite Andrew Massey. Andrew's a, a parishioner here at our church uh, to share a few thoughts about faithful giving. Uh, we're probably picking up the radio through our speakers. Just think of it as mood music. Hello, my name is Andrew Massey, and I'm happy to be joining you today to speak about the Faithful Giving Campaign and our theme this year of Come Together. In thinking about what to say today, my mind wandered to the Marvel superhero movies my son watches. In case you're unfamiliar, there are an endless number of these films, because each of the many superheroes gets an origin story. They say, write what you know. So I thought perhaps I'd steal a page from the Marvel superheroes and tell you my origin story, or more precisely, my Episcopal Church origin story. Like the origins of the Episcopal Church itself, my Episcopal Church origin story is entirely pragmatic. It is the story of my grandparents. My grandfather was placed in an orphanage when his poor Irish immigrant parents could not afford to raise him. He was adopted by a couple, but the husband was abusive, so my grandfather ran away. Riding the rails during the Depression, he wound up in New York City. He met a guy at a pool hall who introduced my grandfather to his sister. She was the daughter of Orthodox Jews who had fled anti-Semitic violence in Poland. But she could not understand her parents' continued adherence to the strict Orthodox lifestyle from the old world, now that they were living in America. They married, and after the war, my grandfather was looking for a job, but no one would hire a man without a religion married to an Orthodox Jew. So to improve his prospects, they told people my grandmother was Armenian and joined the Episcopal Church. My grandfather had a very successful career in the cruise ship industry, and my family have been Episcopalians ever since. My grandfather was not a religious man and did not stick with the church, but my grandmother did. Shortly before she died, she pointed out that she had never formally converted to Christianity or become a member of the Episcopal Church. The minister at our parish arranged for this, and it meant so much to her to make that commitment in a formal way to the church she had been attending for decades. I've been thinking about my grandmother over the past 18 months of this pandemic, where the threat of COVID-19 has kept us from attending church, or more precisely, going to church. Because of course, God has been streaming to us over YouTube and Facebook Live. We can watch church in our pajamas, experience coffee hour over Zoom, and take communion with those cool little kits with the wine at the top and the bread at the bottom. It's comfortable and convenient. Why would we ever go back? But for some reason, my grandmother did keep going back to church, even long after my grandfather had retired. Being a member of the Episcopal Church was important to her. She didn't join the church following an epiphany, but she stayed because she found meaning in being a member. I'm an Episcopalian because, frankly, I don't know any better. But I keep going back to Christ Church because of the people I have met here and the fellowship we have shared. Growing up, church social events seemed incidental to religion. As a member of Christ Church, I have come to learn that God exists at coffee hour, meals with fellow parishioners, and even in the anarchic joy of faithful, giving, uh, faithful families. It doesn't matter why you are here. It just matters that you keep coming back. After these many hard months of isolation and tragedy, coming back can seem daunting. 
Are we the same people who left this place when the lockdown began? I don't have an answer to that question, but I do know that the opportunity to restore bonds that were challenged by social distancing is too essential to our experience at Christ Church to pass up. That is why Come Together is our theme this year for Faithful Giving. It is what we have yearned for over these 18 months because it is the essence of our experience as members of Christ Church. And it is also the way in which we sustain the church by coming together with our resources of time and money to make this a place where these important relationships can thrive. I hope you will come together during this faithful giving season and keep coming back to Christ Church. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Finally, let me remind you all that this altar is God's table, and everyone is invited to join us for communion. Walk in love with Christ. Come to our table with joy and thanksgiving.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, you laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst from your womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we shout with joy. Creator of all, you call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. You gave Jesus to be human, to share our life and give himself to us. Through Jesus, you reconciled and restored us. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that they may be your body and blood. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Now let us sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Be what you see, receive what you are.
Our prayer after communion is on page 14. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and have fed us with his sacrament. Send us the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. Today is the first Sunday of the month when we offer birthday and anniversary blessings. If you have a birthday within the last few weeks or the next few weeks and you'd like a blessing, please stand. Everyone else, please join me in saying our birthday prayer on page 14. O oh God, your times are in, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And any anniversaries, please stand up. We say together, God, send your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now everybody stand up for a blessing in the spirit of St. Francis. As you go forth from our church today, may you seek God everywhere, in all creatures, in all people. May you bless those people as you travel among them. All this we ask in the name of the God who creates us, who walks with us, and who breathes within us. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.